Thank you for joining Resurrection Lutheran Church this Sunday morning, giving praise with us for God's blessings of music, prayer, and scripture. I, Pastor Karen Perkins, will be sharing a message of grace, forgiveness, and hope. All of the worship leaders welcome you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of man, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O powerful God, in Jesus Christ you turn death into life and defeat into victory. Increase your faith and trust in him, that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. what time is it? Oh, you're eating. Time for children's message. Okay. While you are trying to do your bulletin, I ask you to listen, because we're going to talk about something from the song today. What to hear from the song today, because my whole message is about it. I wait for you, O Lord. My soul waits. In your word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who keep watch for the morning. More than those who keep watch for the morning. Do you like waiting? No. What are some things that you have to wait for? You have to wait for God. That's the big one. That's what we're talking about today. Are there some more relatable things that you have to wait for? Like dinner, mom to be ready to leave the house, dessert, uh, Lego time at church. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And how do you wait for those things? How do you survive waiting? Because kids do a lot of waiting. Grown-ups don't do as much waiting because we control our own schedules. But kids, you have to wait. You can't do something until I say, it's time to go do this, it's time to go do that. You have to wait for me to cook your dinner, to drive you in the car, to open the front door for you. Right? How do you deal with waiting? How do you think? You're eating. That is one way that people deal with waiting. They eat. Sometimes you play in your room. Yep. Sometimes you pace by the door. Yeah. Sometimes you go, Mom, 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 is dinner done? Is dinner done? Right? Today we're talking about waiting for God, waiting for Jesus to come back again. How do you think we can wait? You don't know? <laughs> think we could wait with some praying? No? Yes. Oh, yes. That was a yes. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. We could wait with praying. We could... How else could we wait? Crunching food in our mouth. We could eat. We do eat together. Where do we eat together every week? Uh, table. Yeah, at the table behind us. We'll eat communion together. All right, let's pray about waiting. Dear God, help us in our waiting. Help us to be patient and to be in the now while we wait for the future. Be with us through that journey. Amen. Thank you. 
So I invite you to rise as you are able. Let us together welcome the gospel. Well, if 
something is going to be cast out, it must first be bound. It is way too easy for us to take that as a congregation and as congregations throughout history, as though we're talking about individuals and we're talking about possession, you know, possession and who, 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 with whom can we do ministry and what binds us and what gets cast out. But as, as is often the case in Jesus' parables, this is a first, if, if, I, if, I were, if I were possessed, I would, I would be casting out devils. And just because this accusation is made by the scribes, I think it is in this case, by the scribes, doesn't make it the case. They are making the accusation, but it doesn't, if you look at the evidence, it doesn't make sense. But he's also telling us about how it is that God transforms us. What inside you needs to be bound so that your spirit can be plundered by God? What inside you, not your neighbor, not the person sitting near you, not the person you don't agree with, what inside you needs to be bound so that the Spirit can plunder your heart? Because that's the point, is that the Spirit is what's going to cast out what, what at the time was called demonic possessions. We are less inclined to talk about it as demonic possessions, but, but there is evil in our hearts, there is evil in our lives, there is evil in our actions, in each of us. And this is part of the teaching, saying it's in it, right? And Jesus' existence is to cast that out so that we may be filled by the Spirit, so our lives then may be bound by the Spirit, taken over by the Holy Spirit, transformed by the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. So I'm just going to ask you, to, I'm going to keep coming back to that. What needs to be plugged? And then we go to this family bit. His family, notice at the beginning of the story, his family told him, shh, cut it out. You are getting in trouble. People are talking about you. They're saying bad stuff about you. Cut it out. It's not the first or the last time that Jesus gets told this. And people are, in fact, talking about it. Saying these things about him. And he does, in fact, get in trouble. But his family tries to tell him, you know what, dude, be cool. Just not going to get involved in that part. What does he say? Pull it up. Just put part of it. Uh, oh, yeah. They were saying about casting out demons. And then he told, asked the question, how can Satan cast this out? So, at the end then, when people say, your family's calling for you, your mother and your brothers, they're calling, you know, they're, they're, they're calling for you to come in. He's, he's, he's looking at the people with whom he's doing ministry. Not the people with whom he has blood ties. Not the people he doesn't suggest that they're perfect. With the people with whom he's doing ministry and says, these, these are my people. It's not based on skin color. It's not based on orientation. It's not based on age. It's not based on denominationalism. It's not based on national origin. It's not based on, you know, paganism. These are my people. 
is people who do the will of God. How can people do the will of God if first the strong man of, of possession, negativity, hostility, closedness, commitment to self and to winning, commitment to protecting possessions, commitment to getting one's way, commitment to determining where the boundaries are, whether they're, you know, national, church, whatever, where the boundaries are. This is 
brace coming to bind and then cast out that within each of us. And once again, we're all really good at figuring out what we think should be cast out of our neighbors. What should be cast out of us to open a room for the work of the Father right now? How do we hear that work? The time we let go of our own voices and repeating over and over and over again what we want to have happen, or what we want, or what we, what we are committed to. How do we say no to those people who say, cut it out? You're getting in trouble. Cut it out. People have love, right? This family was doing it out of love. It's not like they were doing it because they necessarily disagree with him. They didn't want him to get in trouble. How do we resist those voices? Well, it's not going to be by our own strength. In this case, it was by Jesus, right? And we certainly have plenty of examples scripturally, even when the apostles do it. Jesus, cut it out. Do you not see what's happening here? He said, no, you don't see what's happening. So, what don't we see? What are the possibilities that God has for us individually? And what are the possibilities that God has for us corporately? As a congregation, and as a city, and as a denomination, as a people who are defined not by blood, but by witnesses to the gospel of Christ. I invite you today to be transformed by that spirit. <coughs> to have Found what needs winding, and cast out what needs casting, and then be filled, filled with the love of God, so that you can be with me and with the rest of the body of Christ, those that do the will of the one who sent him. Be blessed by that today. In Jesus' name. Please repeat with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And I believe in Jesus Christ, our absolute Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and who was born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. ourselves, and our world. Awaken our hearts to your mercy. We give you thanks for renewers of the church in every age. Enliven the creativity and persistence of all seeking to transform the church into a closer vision your beloved community. Here's the force of the God. This is our prayer. prayer. Your presence is revealed in the shade of trees, the growth of seeds into flowers, and in the blessing of plants granting food in their right season. Heal land scarred by deforestation, pollution, or infestation. 
Teach us to cultivate the earth with respect and reverence. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Our nations and communities are divided, O oh God. Teach us again to listen with curiosity and mercy, even in disagreement. Grant us the humility, acknowledge our hardness of heart, and make us bold in modeling cooperation for the sake of the common good. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Hear the prayers of all who cry out to you from the depths of fear, despair, or hopelessness. With haste, rescue victims of trafficking, exploitation, and abuse. And bless organizations and individuals who work on their behalf. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Grant wisdom and clarity to all who are in seasons of discernment and transition. High school graduates preparing for new jobs or new educational journeys. Those who are shifting careers. Those who are navigating changes in their relationships and congregations living in the new and uncomfortable ministries. Accompany them with your peace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Praise to you for our ancestors in faith who believed, spoke, and lived in you. Give us confidence that as Jesus was raised, so we too will be raised with all the saints into your everlasting presence. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. This bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the Feast of Plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here your body for the life of the world. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the same our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please recite with me. The mission and our resurrection of the Church is to promote spiritual growth in Christ and service to all people. The blessing of God, who provides for us feeds us and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. This has been an abridged worship service of Resurrection Lutheran Church. You are welcome to join us for worship in person on Sunday mornings at 930. We are located at 740 West 10th Street in downtown Juneau. Our phone number is 586-2380. More information about our location, parking lot, current COVID policy, and other contact information is available on our website at rlcjuno.org. The website is also the best way to learn about what events are happening with the community outreach ministry, Juno Live. With a vital food pantry, bell choir, quilting group, Bible study, and others, there may be a ministry here just for you. 
come and see.